you're listening to. Anthony Scandale. Ignite your inner power and watch your world change. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anthony Salviscandale. I'm an author, coach, and speaker, and I can't wait to do this podcast. It's been way too long. The last time I did one was about, uh, well, probably about a month and a half ago. However, it is summer, and it it, it is kind of hard sometimes to uh, to put together a podcast on a on a regular basis when you've got so much stuff going on, and especially when your guests who you're trying to get a hold of are also busy, respectively, doing their craft. But I've managed to find three more people to do a podcast for the coming months, so stick around for that. My first guest, I'm so happy to have her on because she genuinely loves her craft. And this is what this podcast is really about. It's about the guests who come on, who have a product or a service, and and I'm here just to sort of give them another platform or even give them some content so that they can put onto their website to connect with other people. So this is me helping my guests out. And today, Karen McGregor will join me, who is a an incredible speaker. She did a TED Talks in Stanley Park uh, not too long ago, and she is always teaching her craft to people. In fact, I met Karen about two years ago at a speaking event and one of the reasons why I went to the speaking event was because of the one person I really wanted to see, which was Les Brown. Unfortunately, Les Brown didn't make it. However, I stuck around anyways to listen to all these other incredible speakers like Brendan Bouchard, uh, Dennis Waitley, and of course, Karen McGregor, who came on the stage, which I didn't know who she was at the time. After she spoke, I had to go talk to her because she was offering a program called Rock the Stage, which is a three-day program, and I'm so grateful I did because I learned so much about public speaking, and even though I've been teaching and coaching kids for almost 20 years, I felt it was necessary to, you know, hone my skills and how I present myself in front of people, and I tell you, anything that she taught me definitely works, (laughs) so if you are looking to do some public speaking, listen in, Karen McGregor's on now, so how are you, Karen? Karen? I'm well, Anthony. Thanks for having me on the show. No, thank you. I, I'm so excited you're doing this with me. In fact, I just got a, a text message from Adrian Starks, who I met at your Rock to Stage program a couple years ago. And this is what he said. He said, excellent. That's great news, Anthony. So glad you you have Karen on your podcast. She is on fire. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful to hear. Love, Adrian. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what's cool is that we'll be seeing. I'll be seeing him in in uh, actually at the end of this week. I'll be in Seattle to watch a baseball game, and we're gonna manage to meet up because I hope him and I can do some more collaboration down the road. But uh, yeah, he's a great guy. But I just thought I just uh, sent that message to you because uh, you are on fire at the moment. I mean, you just continue to climb and climb and climb. I remember when I first saw you in Vancouver. Uh, it was at uh, an event at the Convention Center in Vancouver with uh, Brendan Bouchard, Marshy Shimoff, uh, Dennis Waitley. You were there. I didn't know you were there. I went to see Les Brown. He didn't show up. Um, and I guess my intention was to meet him, but I ended up meeting you instead out of all the other people. Thank you so much. Uh, there's something about you that says yes. I want to help you. And I and I got that from you. You spoke from the heart and I could feel it. And I felt, okay, I'm going to go talk to her right away. And I did. And then, and then I did your uh, Rock the Stage program for three days. And thank you so much because because of that, I've been doing, um, I'm, I'm much more comfortable in front of people. I've been coaching for about 20 years, uh, hockey, doing that kind of thing. But recently I did two weeks where it was eight days in a row on the ice with kids, coaching and then doing some video seminars and for some reason something clicked where I'm like I'm in my element this is exactly what I want to do so thank you for that uh, I've got more confidence now because of it but let's let's get started with uh, rock the stage how that came about absolutely well you know a number of years ago 
I was really, really passionate about speaking in terms of, you know, helping people to really gain presence, gain um, a sense of confidence on the stage. And, and, and my whole life, I've really been drawn to the stage, I've been, even though I'm an introvert. So let's just get that out of the way. I, I don't believe that. Sorry. <laughs> 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 really shy, super shy, super introverted, but uh, definitely drawn to the stage because I always felt that sharing a message publicly was an important thing for, for many of us to do. And so at that point in my life, um, you know, that it was very rewarding to help people. But what I noticed was that a lot of people had poor structure. They had poor content. Um, you know, they, they, they went off on tangents. And so what I noticed, Anthony, was that even if they were really good speakers, they didn't necessarily have great impact. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, entrepreneurs who wanted to grow their business and sell their products and programs and services, um, they were really struggling too because a lot of them were already fairly competent speakers but just not getting any results. So. Mm. That's when I really, you know, jumped into uh, really looking at what is it that's missing. And it was missing for me, too. And, you know, that's a big part of my story is I was getting uh, going through a divorce. And, uh, you know, the lawyers were telling me, go back and get a real job. You have your master's in education. You should be, you know, uh, doing something sensible with your life. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so... I thought, okay, well, either I have to go back and do that and die, uh, literally, um, or I can figure out how to find this missing piece, which was essentially to have greater impact and greater results um, as a business owner. And so that's when, um, you know, at the time I was helping people with, with really uh, getting into their heart, their intuition, developing that. And so what happened was that with, with all of the things that I was developing in the intuitive world, when I started to learn these principles, when I started to become mentored by many different people, I created a system, which I now call Rock the Stage, right. and, it ha and it helped me in the intuitive world. And so I thought, well, if it helps me there... I can probably help a lot of other people to do the same thing. So that's how this gradual metamorphosis happened. And now, of course, as you know, Rock the Stage is very well known and respected and uh, really helps people get the results they want. You know, I, I love hearing this um, because I'm sure there was a time uh, where you said, I can't do this anymore, this environment of teaching, because I remember uh, watching your... Uh, your recent TED Talks. We'll get into that more later. But you mentioned that uh, for you just to be doing the teaching that it's that that that's involved with uh, public schools that it's kind of regimented and you could only teach a certain way, so to speak. Um, what happened during that process when you said, you know what, I can't do this anymore? Um, because I'm sure there was a point where he said, that's it. I have to just pull the chute and I've got nothing underneath me to catch me. Yes, that was a very scary moment for me. Um, but I think what was more important was my resolve to live life the way that I knew would honor my values and would make the biggest difference to other people. And so, I, you know, for anyone listening, it's, it's so important to follow your heart and, as I said earlier, to have systems and structures that actually will, will work to get you to where you want to go and you're absolutely right you know I, I mean I love teachers I honor teachers but when I was a teacher the, the the biggest thing was that I didn't feel that this that the system was really benefiting kids and teachers and mm -hmm. I was dying within that system and so freedom and creativity are my two top values and if I can't express my freedom and creativity, I, I start to actually, you know, go into a downward spiral. And that's exactly what happened to me. So now 
you know, owning my own business and being able to create a lot of wonderful um, uh, trainings and, and talks for people and inspire them and educate them is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. Excellent. And, you know, I'm just watching. I know you can't see her, but she's smiling um, and I can really <laughs> feel it. I hope you can feel it, too, because, yes, um, it's, it's interesting. I think a lot of people do get really scared when they realize, hey, th what I'm doing now isn't helping me. Um, and when you talked about that in your in your uh, TED TEDx talk in Stanley Park, which was I think uh, a few months ago now, this is July of 2018, um, it felt like you were you were missing that that element, and you were talking about the three keys to fulfillment. And I think one of the one of them was basically that when you find that lasting like that, you, it's that lasting fulfillment that like it is possible. And that, and you find that within serving others, um, and it's interesting because there is that element of uh, going to school and getting an education and hearing a teacher speak. But if that teacher isn't highly invested in the teaching and in teaching you, they're not going to learn anything. Like the student won't. Like I was. That's what happened to me. Like a lot of these teachers I had weren't really invested in helping me. So, yes. so, yeah. it, uh, congratulations on that because it it is a tough thing to do to just say I can't do this anymore I gotta find a different way or in a different platform and you've done so now so I'm speaking with Karen McGregor um, who is who's done very well for herself for with her rock the stage and let's talk about your your Stanley Park uh, TEDx how did that come about well what I always say to people is that no matter uh, what level of speaking you get to you always want to look for opportunities to touch lives. And so with TEDx, um, it is an application process. So you do apply to speak. And for years, I had avoided it because I really felt that it wasn't time. I intuitively thought, it's not quite time to share a particular message that, that was important to me, and that is, of course, around fulfillment. Right. And so when the time came, and I was actually in, in Italy, that was the first time I went to Italy. I know you, you've been following that, that mm -hmm. whole journey as well. Um, and so I, I, I'm, you know, I heard my intuition say loud and clear, this, you go and apply. And it's funny because I didn't want to, but I did follow my intuition and I applied. And I'm so glad that I did because now, you know, 250,000 people have watched my TEDx yes. talk. Yes. And it's just really rewarding to know that, you know, people, they're looking for fulfillment. They, they're they not sure, you know, why they don't feel it right now. And so I'm really pleased that so many people have responded so positively to my TEDx talk. Over 250,000 people since April 4th have viewed the talk. And so it really shows to me that there is a need out there for people to... Uh, you know, have steps and processes that that can lead to a more fulfilling, more happy life. And uh, let's face it, if you're not happy, there's <laughs> everything else in life is 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 not uh, just not as fulfilling. So I think it's really important that we don't view happiness as a fluffy topic, but as uh, the most important topic that we can uh, address yeah exactly and for those of you who haven't seen it or actually are curious to know what we're talking about here uh, the TEDx it's actually called secret to happiness uh, it's your three keys to fulfillment uh, I'm gonna leave a link below so that people can click on it and watch it um, but don't be surprised because right at the end there's a big standing ovation and uh, and they're deservably so how did that feel when you saw everyone stand up and applaud well, it was it was amazing. I mean, that feeling of uh, being received and having my message heard by, you know, I think there were twenty five hundred people in the room. So, it was it was wonderful indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that uh, you saw Tony Robbins. So, on your journey to become a speaker, because um, I guess you, had, if I remember correctly, you'd pulled a shoot at that point of not becoming a teacher anymore and someone dragged you along to uh, watch a TEDx oh sorry um, to watch uh, Tony Robbins um, what was that one message he said to you you think even though that he was speaking to a large group of folks because it does happen it happened with me yeah. and you where you speaking and I could hear it what was the message you heard from him well for me it was really uh, Anthony about 
having a deeper purpose in life, like living true to my purpose. And I've always been in touch with the niggly feelings, the uh, feeling of frustration and feeling off. And whenever I feel that way, I always ask myself, am I doing things today that are actually aligned with my purpose? And if I haven't been doing things for a number of days, I get really bitchy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and you know right. what? A lot of people think they point fingers at their spouse or you know, their job or whatever it is. But in reality, it isn't about any of that. I think it's about the fact that we're not taking the risk to live the life that we really want to live. I highly agree with you with this one because I get that way sometimes where if I don't, like I have I have a big long list of things to do. And if I don't have a list and I'm sitting at home doing nothing, that that's like a recipe for disaster for me. Like especially emotionally. Um, I feel like I need to be doing something all the time, but I, but I, I can I can totally get what you mean. Like it's like you have to find your purpose and sort of work on it every single day. Yes, and I and I think that you know it, it doesn't necessarily come as a lightning bolt, mm-hmm. and uh, and so some people are looking for that, you know, or they they. Uh, they feel that somehow it's just going to appear. But a lot of times it's things, in my opinion, that have that, that you've been just secretly harboring in your heart and just don't want to take the risk to really pursue it or take the risk to step into it. And so I, I, I think that, you know, in my second key in that, in, in my TED Talk, it's also really, really important because I talk about how my dad took risks his yes. whole life, right? Including, you know, coming from Germany with no money. You know, he's in his early twenties. He's got a new wife and a new baby, and 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 uh, and that, you know, and many of our our parents, of course, uh, or grandparents, immigrated, and so you know, that's probably the biggest risk of all. So I was really inspired by my dad and, and, and my parents in general to, um, to risk having the life that I wanted. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's paid off for you big time now. So how long have you been, you, have you been doing rock the stage for now? Well, it is seven years now already, and wow. it is a beautiful, it has been a beautiful seven years. We're also uh, right now in the middle of um, licensing people to lead Rock the Stage, which is a new oh, wow. development Yeah, in, in our business, Speaker Success Formula. So it's, uh, yeah, and that's really exciting because I want to take this uh, program and the results that the program gets to a global level and of course that doesn't involve just me so I'm I'm uh, yeah I'm really excited to be able to train people to do what I do now and it's incredible and you know I'm this is news for me so that makes me excited because we're gonna have to talk about that later um, privately so that we can get uh, going with that because that's that's super exciting because I know because I know there are are there hundreds of people out there who are willing uh, to to speak in front of people and maybe some people already have an audience already or a tribe as you like to call it um if if there's anyone out there listening if you are serious about uh, doing any kind of public speaking or just just to feel a little bit more confident in speaking in front of people talk to karen i highly 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 recommend her uh she definitely took me out of my comfort zone i remember i remember that one um what was it? It was one little exercise you had us do and we had to kind of sit there. Well, not sit, but stand in front of people and just be silent. And and then I think the process was you had to wait for people to put their hands up in the audience. You remember that, uh, yeah. that exercise? I can't tell you just that one little tidbit made a huge difference because I work with kids all the time and you kind of have to just be mute and just kind of show who is boss of the room and I have to thank you again for that because it's worked so many times the kids look at each other they look at me they look at each other look at me like then they're like I think we should be quiet now (laughs) (laughs) but you know like 
Go ahead, it's sorry. Presence, it really is, and I think that kids and adults alike respect uh, someone who is really present in the yeah. room and comfortable in their own skin. And you're right, there are times, not all the time, but there are times when we need to own the room, we need to own that space and claim that space, and people sense that and they respect it. So, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing. <laughs> I, I thought I had to because I, cause I, was, I was speaking with these kids and it just these little tidbits would come up. And yeah, it's helped a lot immensely. So if you are, again, interested, rock the stage with Karen McGregor. Uh, we're going to, if you haven't already, you'll be able to see that you know, her uh, website is coming up every once in a while on the screen. Um, let's talk about Italy because... Um, it, you went to Florence, Italy, which is actually Firenze in Italian. And I yes. lived there for about 10 weeks. I actually quit my job, folks, to go learn Italian for 10 weeks. It sounds crazy, but I did. I mean, my Italian is not so so great. But there is a wealth of inspiration there. But give me one big reason why you chose to have like a little retreat in Firenze. Absolutely. Well, it was called Create Your Masterpiece. And what better place to have a retreat that's all about creating something new in your life that'll serve people at a high level than to go to the birthplace of the Renaissance. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, taking people to see that, you know, things they've read in history books or, you know, many, many pictures of, let's say, Michelangelo's um, the David yeah. or La Pieta, we see those, but to actually go and 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 see those beautiful, beautiful masterpieces in real life is completely different. And I have to say, if anyone ever has the opportunity, you you must go to to Florence, Firenze, <laughs> Firenze or or do a retreat with Karen in Firenze. Yeah, retreat with me. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I I. I I would love to be able to do that retreat annually in Italy. Uh, at this point, you know, we, we've got the first one. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're looking at doing another one. I have a, a, a partner who also is part of the whole process uh, in that retreat. And I think, you know, for, for all of you listening, one of the things that inspired me most when I saw the David was that, you know, Michelangelo worked nonstop for three years. He hardly ate. He just slept by that statue, you know, that piece of marble. And um, he just devoted his entire being for three years to this, this one beautiful piece. And I think that quite often when we get inspired to create something, we forget that, yeah, you know, it is hard work, but imagine when you're finished, the people get to enjoy and be served by your work, perhaps for hundreds of years. So yes. that's really cool, right? That whole process of just starting from nothing and yeah. creating something that will change the world. Exactly. And excuse me, but... Uh... Michelangelo and just like any other person in the Renaissance, they left behind a legacy. And yes. why not? Like, I mean, if you are listening, uh, you do have a legacy. You do have a story to tell and just work on it. I mean, even in the Renaissance back then, if they were a sculptor, that's that's what you were. You were a sculptor 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And, and it's no wonder that Michelangelo, who was highly talented incredibly talented not just with uh, sculpting but with the uh, painting. painting but yeah. it's it's one of those things that you just got to harness that skill and just you know and put your mark behind it and, and it's interesting it, the if you look at the la pieta you can actually see that banner of michelangelo right across uh the virgin mary's uh body if you notice that his he actually yes. put michelangelo across which i thought was wait, okay that was uh, uh, interesting <laughs> Um, well, yeah. It was the only sculpture that he ever put his name on, which was really interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he was about what 22, 23 years old when he when he created that. Yeah. And yeah. if you haven't seen it, it's a real marvel. Uh, you get a real sense of it's that depiction of someone who had just died in the arms of someone, 
right? It doesn't matter if it's the Virgin Mary or Mary Magdalene. It doesn't matter who that is. It's just that that precise moment in time where there's death and that realization of death, which I think is amazing. If you haven't seen it, folks, go to Rome. Go have a look at it. It's incredible. Again, I'm here with Karen McGregor. We're talking about uh, Rock the Stage and her recent trip to Italy. Um, let's uh, let's shift it a little bit here. Um, can you give us a, a couple of tips for people who are a little bit shy when they go talk to in front of people? Well, you know, I always say that speaking is an inside job. It's not. It's not outside of you. And so. One of the things that you need to get really clear on when you're nervous and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want to get up there publicly. What if I screw up? You know, will they reject me? All those thoughts, um, which are perfectly natural, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you discover your why, when you know why you're delivering this message, it becomes much more easy to connect with people, to to, to really have a sense of, of mission and, and, and meaning. And so many people, when they first start speaking, don't have that. And that's why they really, really get just completely terrified because they forget that the purpose of the speaking is to impact and serve the audience. It's, right. it's not to be seen as perfect or the best or whatever it is. And so it's really important, I think, that when you first start speaking, yes, uh, you know, anytime you can find a group that will support you to get out there and start small two, three minute talks, that's great. But if you want to get to, uh, you know, a more profound level of connection, then you need to start thinking in terms of what can I do to impact the audience? And so coming from that perspective will change your life um, right. because most of us are, are, you know, terrified for ourselves rather than being motivated to inspire and, and influence the lives of others. Interesting. And we're talking with Karen McGregor, TEDx speaker and CEO of her company called Rock the Stage. And Karen, what else is coming up for you in the summer? Well, I'm really excited on August 6th to be able to share the stage with Tony Robbins, John Gray, Loretta LaRoche, and, and other great masters at their craft. So oh, man. that will uh, that'll take place at the convention center in Vancouver, BC, and I'm really, really thrilled to, to be able to be there and share my message. So the man you saw speak who totally changed your life, you get to share the stage with him now. For the very first time, yes. And it's interesting because wow. it's almost 20 years ago wow. that I saw him and I said, you know what, one day I'm going to share the stage with that man. So dreams do come true. Oh, man. I'm, I'm super excited. Unfortunately, I can't go, but I wish you all the best with it. I know it's going to go well. So where can we reach you uh, with the Rock the Stage and uh, yeah, just give us uh, your email and where to find you and that kind of thing. And it, and do you have a YouTube channel? Yes. So uh, speakersuccessformula.com is where you can reach out and contact me and my and my assistant actually is support at speakersuccessformula.com. Uh, and that is also the name of all of my social media channels as well, including YouTube. So Speaker Success Formula. Awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me here today. No, it's been thank a great you. pleasure. And thank you for being on because I know you, you, you're incredibly busy, especially during the summer months, uh, which, you know, it you can pin her down, honestly, folks. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I wish you all the great success. You're doing a great job so far, uh, Karen. And thank you for being a part of my life and we're going to continue to talk hopefully hopefully we can do this again sometime uh, i'll leave that open to you i look forward to it awesome all right so this is karen mcgregor uh, and uh, myself anthony scandela thank you for joining us today folks and remember ignite your inner power and watch your will change we'll talk soon take care you're listening to anthony scandela Ignite your inner power and watch your world change.